The infraclavicular block is my go-to brachial plexus block for anesthesia of the arm from elbow to hand, both for single shot but also for catheter techniques. It's highly reliable, safe and simple, which also makes it very fast to perform with a little practice. Prepare a linear ultrasound probe, an 80mm 22 gauge block needle, and 30 to 40 ml of local anesthetic for block performance in adults. Using a longer local anesthetic infiltration needle can serve both as a finder needle and also to anesthetize pectoral muscles for comfort. Gently abduct and externally rotate the patient's arm at the shoulder if they are able to do so and support it as needed. However, this is not essential. The block can easily be done with the arm adducted. Just remember to always orient the probe perpendicular to the line of the brachial plexus. This will provide a transverse view of the axillary artery under the pectoral muscles. Slide the probe in a lateral to medial direction along the line of the brachial plexus back and forth to survey the area. The orientation of the cords around the artery changes. They are tightly clustered together more proximally and spread out around the artery more distally or laterally. It is essential to experiment with tilting or angling the probe to obtain the clearest image of the walls of the artery and the fascial outlines of the plexus. The best image is usually obtained with a slightly medial tilt towards the midline. The lateral cord is always visible next to the superior or cranial aspect of the artery and immediately under the deep fascia of pectoralis minor. It lies in its own distinct fascial compartment. The posterior and medial cords are clustered together in a separate deeper compartment next to the superior posterior aspect of the artery. The key to the infraclavicular block is to enter and fill these two fascial compartments with local anesthetic. To do this, we must advance the needle safely past the lateral cord to touch the posterior aspect of the artery or its 6 o'clock position. Once an optimal image has been obtained, plan the needle trajectory accordingly and choose the appropriate skin insertion point relative to the edge of the probe. Infiltrate skin and muscle with local anesthetic. Blood vessels are often seen in the interpectoral fascial plane, but they are not a significant obstacle as they will roll away from the block needle. Advance the needle smoothly through pectoralis major and minor muscles, ensuring that the trajectory angle is appropriate to reach the target. Advance more carefully once the deep fascia of pectoralis minor is reached and ensure that the trajectory is tangential to the borders of the lateral cord to avoid impaling it as you pop through the deep fascia. Inject half a mil of local anesthetic to confirm that the needle tip has entered the lateral cord compartment and to push the lateral cord aside. Continue to intermittently inject half to one mil of local anesthetic to create a safe space as you advance the needle tip stepwise, that is, inject, advance, inject, advance, aiming towards the posterior six o'clock aspect of the artery. It's critical to adopt a trajectory that brings the needle tip into contact with the artery and adjust the needle angle as needed. Withdraw and reinsert the needle if you have to. The risk of arterial puncture is low if the needle is tangential to the arterial wall. When you pierce the dividing fascial septum between compartments, the incremental half mil injection will produce local anesthetic spread that separates or peels the posterior and medial cords away from the artery. When you see this local anesthetic spread pattern immediately under the artery that pushes the cords down and away, stop advancing the needle and inject a total of 20 to 25 mils of local anesthetic into this posterior compartment. It is critical that the needle tip and the local anesthetic are deposited right next to the artery. The artery walls should be clearly outlined by the fluid. With this pattern, a successful block is virtually guaranteed. Perform dynamic scanning proximally and distally along the plexus during injection to assess spread and exclude nerve expansion. Finish by withdrawing the needle into the lateral cord compartment 
and injecting a further 5 to 8 mils of local anesthetic around the lateral cord for a total of 10 mils or so in this region. This completes the block. Onset time to surgical anesthesia is similar to other brachial plexus blocks. At least 15 to 20 minutes should be allowed for maximal effect before deciding on whether supplemental analgesia is required.